I'm not the only one who is a huge fan of the Hex shotgun. That weapon helped a lot of players get through their initial mastery ranks, being the first real weapon I've ever used. That said, the problem with the Hex shotgun is that it can only do so much, powerful as it may be. Thankfully for us, the thunderous roar of the quad battles continues at mastery rank 12 with the bigger brother, the Vakor Hex. And today we're gonna be diving deeper into this fantastic primary weapon. As always, my name is Lazar and I got a couple of builds laid out for you guys. We're gonna be talking about status builds, critical chance bleed builds, even a Riven setup and of course, everybody's favorite Mumu, Hunter Mumu. That said, I will maintain my new player friendly approach. So if you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Vakor Heck. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that I'm simply gonna be taking a couple of free shots. The Vakor Heck doesn't really differ much from the regular Heck in the sense that it looks the same, it sounds the same. Oh baby, that thunderous roar, absolutely bloody amazing. Can you guys pick up the little bit of echo that he put in there? That's why it sounds so thunderous and all whatnot. But anyway, I digress. You get even the same amount of default pellets. By default, you're looking at 7 pellets at the wall, just like the regular Heck. Now, what this one has and the regular heck does not is an innate effect, a syndicate effect from Steel Meridian, the Justice, which is absolutely bloody fantastic. However, that one comes with a bit of a cost in the sense that you can no longer equip Scatter Justice and that delicious 200% multi shot. But hey, you can't exactly win them all. Other than that, it's a shotgun and the recoil is quite heavy, as you can see. And of course, in order to get the most out of it, you're gonna have to be nice, close, and personal with your target. Now let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. First of all, mod capacity is gonna be 60 out of 60, and if your Vakor Heck has only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and install the Oro King Catalyst. Now this one can be found from alerts, invasions, or if you're lucky, from the daily sortie. And of course, you can also pay 20 plat to have one installed. Next, my weapon has been formatted a total of 7 times, but I only do this to test various mod combinations. For the weapon build, I'm recommending you guys 4 Forma should do it. Simply add 4 V symbols or Madurai. The accuracy is gonna be 9.1, which is pretty standard for a shotgun. Just keep in mind that falloff is between 10 and 25 meters. That means that past 10 meters, you are losing damage. Once again, it's a shotgun, so nice and close with your target. Check out that critical chance, 25% which is absolutely fantastic, this is a huge upgrade over the regular heck and the same crit multi of 2.0x, we got a fire rate of 3 and a magazine of 8, probably, probably outside of the critical chance, this is the biggest upgrade versus the regular version of the heck because that one had only 4 which was the bane of my existence while leveling up and you know getting to higher mastery ranks. Reload of 2.3, which is decent, a tad on the long side, but still you can deal with this one. A ribbon disposition of 2 out of 5. Now this one saw a buff in the Fortuna patch, if you guys remember. The heck went up from 0 0.6 to 0 0.9, therefore ribbon disposition, 2 little balls. Now, is it worth going for a heck ribbon? Yeah, but only if you love the weapon and if you want to get the most out of it. Again, when it comes to Dispo 2, you're not going to see huge amount of stats on your ribbons, but still worth getting. Status chance 25%, when I see 25% on a pellet based weapon I just start thinking about all the ways I can get that magic 100% but more on that just a tad later. Now let's take a look at the damage, this is identical once again to the regular heck, impact, puncture and slash, same values and same layout. Now the problem is that even if I was to add sweeping serration, even shredder for whatever reason, I'm still not gonna get my slash to a higher value than the puncture, so that's a bit of an issue when it comes to status effects. Now let's talk about that status effect, shall we? Keep in mind that on pellet based weapons, what we usually try to get is 100% status chance before multi shot effect. Take a look at Health Chamber 120% multi shot. That means that now I am firing about 15.4, something like that pellets per shot. Now you're not gonna take a pellet and slice it up into little pieces, no, but you have a 40% chance per shot to get an additional pellet. You get how that one works. <clears throat> now when it comes to projectile based weapons, when it comes to heat scan weapons and so on and so forth, your status chance also goes up. Just keep in mind that that is a shot status chance. It represents the chance that one of your pellets will be applying a status effect. So bear that one in mind. If we get 
the status chance to 100% before multi-shot effects, then all of our pellets will be applying a status effect. If you guys want to know exactly the formula and how it's calculated, it's over on the wiki, but it's best to think of it like this. If you don't get a true 100% status chance before multi-shot effects, your status chance will be getting divided among the number of pellets that you fire. It's a bit convoluted, but that's how Warframe works. So let's take a look at status effects and see if we can get that magical 100% number. Well, I'm not gonna bore you with this, I already have a status build, there you go, well, a beginning of a status build. If I am to use all the four 60-60 mods, Scattering Inferno, Frigid Blast, Toxic Barrage, and Shell Shock, I'm gonna be going to 85%. Still no cigar, it's still not enough, my status chance is still getting divided. Now, I can patch that one up, that last 15%, with a Riven mod, for example. How much do I need? I need 60% more. I need a total of 300% true status chance to get the magic 100% number. Now what I can also do is go through Nano Applicator. Now this is an event only mod, the Acolyte event, and it can be a fair bit expensive. I'll be honest with you guys, I do not like playing with Nano Applicator, but its worth cannot be denied. 90% status chance, but this is on Ability Cast, so you're gonna have to synergize with your Warframe. You can also pop out using your Operator, and this one will trigger. Very well, I'm going over 100% through status chance, but you see the problem with the build already? I got 5 mods locked into place, then I'm forced into double elementals. Right now I have blast and corrosive on the weapon, but I can change these around to get different status effects. I can go vital and radiation, which would be awesome if the weapon would have procced a whole lot of slash, but it doesn't, even with sweeping serration. So for now, we're just going to be going with standard blast corrosive. Blast currently in Warframe, ah! It's kind of seen like the plague, as the status effect simply knocks down targets. Now, that knockdown can be useful when it comes to higher level content, get some crowd control up in there, but when it comes to lower level content, most players simply just stay away from blast, as it can be annoying. Corrosive, on the other hand, is one of the best elemental combos in the game, as it will be reducing the maximum armor an enemy has. Therefore, subsequent shots will be dealing more and more damage to an armored target. Now, not all targets have armor, but when it comes to the factions in Warframe, you gotta keep in mind that when it comes to the infested, there's a lot of them, but they're fairly weak. AoE weapons heavily modded into heat normally is more than enough to deal with them. If you're talking about the Corpus faction, Fortuna and all whatnot, now, these guys are a bit more tricky in the sense that they have more abilities. They can be a bit more agile, they deal a lot more damage, but when it comes to their defenses, they're fairly weak. They have big shields, but against shields you can build magnetic, but a smarter idea would be to build gas or toxin, as it bypasses their shields entirely and deals damage to their health. And we're back to the Grenier, or heavily armored targets, not counting sentients, more on those mm, some other time. Now, Grenier have two armor types, Alloy, which is weak to radiation damage, and Ferrite, which is weak to corrosive damage. Against Grenier, more often than not, your safest bet is to build corrosive. Never mind the increase in damage depending on the elemental that you have, but corrosive on a status proc reduces armor regardless of its type. So bear that one in mind. Very well, I got my 100% true status chance. What am I supposed to do with the last three slots? Well... <laughs> When it comes to any weapon, damage is never really a bad idea unless you're playing 965 Chroma, but we're not gonna go into that. Let's go for standard mods initially. Of course, if you guys got Prime, go for Prime. We're gonna be adding point blank with damage and next we're gonna go to multi-shot as it's mandatory on basically almost any type of weapon except rocket launcher, grenade launchers, but more on that some other time. 120% multi-shot, again 15.4 pellets right now, and I still have one more mod slot left on the weapon. Now you can plug into this one whatever you guys feel comfortable with. For example, I know a lot of players like Blaze, you guys like Blaze too, right? Now take a look at this one, 60% damage and 60% heat, now this one adds a truck of damage. You know what the problem with Blaze is? I'm building this weapon for a 100% true status chance, yes? Well, that heat is getting combined into my Blast, so therefore Blast will have a higher chance to proc than my Corrosive. Ah, no cigar, not really the smartest idea. And since we're talking status effects and procs, let's keep in mind the golden rule in Warframe. The physical types, Impact, Puncture and Slash have a 4 times greater chance of proccing over elemental types such as Blast or Corrosive. So when you're looking at IPS, try to visually multiply at times 4 just so you can see the correct order when it comes to procs. Needless to say, there's nothing I can do to catch up to the Puncture. So the order on the weapon, if I leave it like this, 
is going to be Puncture, followed by Blast, Corrosive, and of course only after that Slash and Impact, which is why I don't recommend Blaze. It's not a bad mod, but it simply fiddles too much with a status procs. What other options do I have? Flat damage with uh, Vicious Spread. Now take a look at this one, 90% damage, which is the same amount as Point Blank, but it also adds that spread. That spread will translate into a lower accuracy. We don't care, okay? It's a shotgun. You're gonna be using it, again, nice, close, and personal, so you can go for something like Vicious Spread, or another good idea, more multi-shot is always a good idea, especially on a status-based weapon, 60% multi-shot with Vigilante Armaments. The difference between this and this, honestly, is my new to go for whatever you guys believe to be best. I am going to be going with additional multi-shot. Alright, we got our first build, let's see if it's got some punch on it or not. Level 120, Corrupted Heavy Gunners, just one real quick check to make sure I don't have any Arcanes or anything. There we go, perfect. Now, I'm gonna have to trigger my Nano Applicator, because if I don't take a look at this... It barely did anything! It barely did anything, only a few status procs, because again, I don't have that true 100%. Now, in order to proc it, I can use an ability of my Warframe, or I can simply pop out uh, with my Operator. As you can see, now it indeed uh, activated. And now the difference is quite large, because with each and every shot, I am going to be applying a truck and a half worth of status effects to the targets. And as you saw there, many of them, but not most of them, were corrosive procs. Most of them are puncture procs, which highlights the problem with a 100% true status chance build on the heck or the Vakor heck. What can I do about that puncture? Well, there is one thing you can do about it, a negative puncture riven but the problem is the disposition the disposition is only two so you're not gonna get a huge amount of minus puncture still it would help now a build such as this obviously kicks some serious but but we can do a whole lot better this is essentially similar results as you would get with the heck but what can the vacor do that the heck cannot very simple it can crit so let's go to a crit base bleed build uh, yeah, let's use this one. We're gonna go for mandatory mods first. Let's go with damage Point blank Multi-shot We're gonna be using both health chamber and vigilante armaments Then we're gonna go of course to crit and I'm gonna outline a problem with any crit based shotgun This is it blunderbuss 90% critical chance. It's simply not all that high and there's no prime version to this one Compare it to Point Strike, for example, which is 150% for primary weapons outside of the shotgun, so bear that one in mind. My crit chance only went to 47.5, and this build will get its power from that overpowered mod, Hunter Munitions. 30% chance to apply slash status on critical hit. What's my critical hit chance? 47.5. Again, it's simply not enough. We need more. And to get more, laser sight with 120% critical chance. Now, this one is the Argon scope of shotguns. It's cheap, don't worry about it. 15, 20 platform, the trade chat, easy to get. Not expensive at all. It's an event only mod, so you can't exactly farm it right now. Now, how much am I gonna be getting with both of these on? Sadly, only about 77%, but it's still gonna be more than enough to get some decent slashes out of Hunter Munitions. We still have a couple of mod slots left on the weapon. Of course, we added crit, but we did not add critical damage. And we can go with Ravage, 60% critical damage. God, this one is overpowered as F. Try to get the Prime version, if at all possible. And you can also go for Shrapnel Shot. Now, take a look at a bit of a comparison between these two. Shrapnel Shot gives you almost 100% critical damage, while Ravage only 60%, and this one can be obtained from Loa Spy Missions, link in the cards right now for easy way mode to farm it. Now I'm gonna be getting a lot of critical damage like this, and this is a option, this is a way you can build through Hunter Munitions, we're gonna test it like this, then we're gonna switch it up to a bit of viral damage, but first, like this. Kill off the targets, respawn, and of course, in order to get the benefit from shrapnel shot, we're gonna have to take out a target. One, two, three, about five shots without shrapnel shot, I believe. Take a look at those bleeds. Six, three, seven, six, three, seven. Pretty good, isn't it? But now I got more critical damage, so therefore, the value of my bleeds are gonna be going through the roof. 1,030, and that is definitely respectable. If you want a Hunter Munitions base build, from my point of view, this is the way to go. Not the only way, however. What you can do is go for Vital Damage. Now, Vital on any, mostly any bleed build is gonna work fantastically well. There's two 
main aspects of viral first it doesn't require a lot of procs in order to be good like corrosive does for example you need a lot of cor corrosive procs to get some real value out of it and that means a lot of shots on the target and second of all it will reduce the maximum health of an enemy to 50 percent for the duration of the viral effect so therefore for that limited amount of time your slashes are kind of dealing double damage the disadvantage to a viral build is that a you need the application on the target and second of all it might slip off before uh, the target bleeds out and their health is popping back up but let's try it out and see how it goes now again my status chance will be getting divided among the number of pellets that i'm firing again link in the description down below for the formula it doesn't work precisely like that but it's best to think of it like that so what am I gonna drop? I'm gonna be dropping multi-shot and I'm gonna be dropping some critical damage through shrapnel shot. Now shrapnel shot is a lot more powerful than ravage, but it's simply not as reliable. It's a non-kill effect. Hey, it's your option. You can go straight for shrapnel shot. Toxin and cold, that's what we need. We're gonna go for the 90 mods <clears throat> initially at least. And where's my cold? Chilling grasp. There we go. I got viral on the weapon. I got a status chance of 46.9, but actually my purple status chance right now is about four point something percent but again i just need one good application and it's gonna be gg now let's take a look at that consistency the problem i take another problem that i take with builds such as this is that if my targets die before i see a viral effect then i don't want it anymore one two three shots four shots on the target five shots no viral effect and if you take a look at the bleeds they're simply gonna kill the target before i see a viral effect and that is a problem with a viral approach to the vague or heck i think i got a vital proc there you go when the vital proc happens it's beautiful isn't it absolutely bloody beautiful but you gotta ask yourself do you like inconsistencies in your builds or not because to be honest with you guys when it comes to levels 40s 50s 60s none of this none of this will actually matter but when it comes to higher level content it will three four still nothing five nothing six nothing no vital effect and of course the bleeds will be killing off or not almost there you go killing off the target before we see a vital effect now there is a way to alleviate this somewhat what if i drop the 90 mods and go for the 60 60 mods the consistency of your vital effect will be increasing it's a lot better even though your status chance basically per pellet goes from four point something percent to about six percent but let's try it out once again, same idea as before, Frigid Blast for Cold, as for Toxin. Toxic Barrage, there we go, 82.7, but again I'm firing... Wait, do I have multi-shot on the weapon? Mm, yes, I do have multi-shot on the weapon, but only Hell's Chamber. I was just trying to run the map in my head to see exactly how what is my chance per pellet. But this should be a lot more consistent. Before, we would do even 5 to 6 shots and still no effect from Vital. 1, 2... Three, four, on four. Not bad. One, there you go, viral effect. Two, three, four. That should be more than enough. You can go for an approach such as this. From my point of view, the inconsistencies in a viral effect on the Vacor Heck is simply not worth it. Why would you bother at the end of the day? Considering you can go more critical chance and more critical damage and a bit of multi-shot, through vigilante armaments and you got guaranteed results you shoot you hit you kill that's it no point to go through viral from my point of view but of course it does work now that's not all we also have a riven setup but keep in mind that it's really not worth trying to go out of your way and spending thousands of plat on a riven for the vacor heck when the vacor heck is such an amazing weapon without a riven and you know what it's only dispo too the values on the stats are simply low but take a look at this one. Heck, Acricon. 200 plutes I paid for this one. Critical damage and critical chance, so it will augment a Hunter Munitions build quite nicely. But take a look at the values. 59% with a 62%. It's a double positive. Yes, these could be a bit higher. If I had a negative, I don't know, minus zoom, minus whatever you guys think is harmless. It doesn't really matter all that much. And then they would have been what? 70% crit chance maybe with a 75% critical damage again it's simply not worth but if you love the weapon like I love this weapon then by all means go for it and of course we use prime mods and as well prime point blank and prime ravage no vital on this one we're gonna go straight for critical chance and critical damage as much as we can get out of it because again this is what the vacor can do and the regular heck simply cannot because the base critical chance is simply too low now I'm gonna have to get the buff from um, shrapnel shot one 
2,453 bleeds and now 2,001 bleeds on the target thanks to that additional critical damage. One, two, three being more than enough to take out one of these high level targets. A build such as this is what I'm recommending to you guys. Again, don't worry too much about the Revan. Just go for Hunter Munitions, Critical Chance, Critical Damage Base Build, Multi-Shot, Damage, the usual. And that's pretty much it. There's still one more thing which I want to do, bump up everything with Warframe buffs. And for that I could be using Chroma, but I don't like Chroma. So instead we're going to be using my favorite weapon specialist, Lady Mirage Prime. Now let's augment her build just a little bit to fit it better. Now what you can do is go for something called Shotgun Amp. Sorry about the voice guys, I'm still kind of recovering after a nasty cold. There we go. Now this one will get you a massive 18% extra damage. Now if you want to squeeze the most you can out of any weapon, you can go for something like amps. But when it comes to shotguns, because it's only 18%, from my point of view, it's simply not worth it. A smarter idea, especially when fighting Grenier, is to go for corrosive projection. This is the way to go when it comes to fighting Grenier. Just keep in mind that any amp aura will grant its benefit regardless of the target. So that can be a huge plus as well. When it comes to Arkeens, these are a lot more impactful. So let's take a look at some raw damage with Rage. <coughs> now, did they correct this one yet? Yes, they did correct this one. Thank you so much, DE. In the past, this used to set to rifles, but now it has been corrected, 120% damage to primary weapons, so it will work fantastically well on shotguns. Also, I don't know if they corrected this one or not, but did you know that Arcanes actually double stack? Yeah, they do. I fully tested this one for hours and hours. I have a couple of members in the community give me a hand. And yes, they do double stack. So what you can go for is double rages. Though keep in mind that on the interface, on the little buff bar, it won't ever show two, but you can get the double buff from two basically arcane anythings for the most part. What you can also do is go for more critical chance with, what was it called, Avenger, I believe. Yes, sir. Arcane Avenger. Now this one will get me 30% critical chance. It's a bonus additive after. So it simply adds on top of what I already had. With the Riven and everything, I'm going to 92%. With the 30% from this one, I'm going to be going to 122% critical chance. All of my pellets are crits. So therefore, I will have a 22% chance at going to orange. And of course, all of them will have the chance to apply a bleed from Hunter Munitions. There we go. Rage with Avenger. This time, however, we're gonna be have to we're gonna unpause the AI so they can hit me and I can get my buffs. And of course, activate Mirage's free ability for a massive damage increase as well as her lovely clone. But first, Avenger, hit me. There we go. Okay, Avenger. One shot on the target, two shots, and of course, the weapon now is fully capable of murdering everything within a single shot. Take a look at this. The bleeds are absolutely fantastic. Three thousand plus on bleeds. And you can go for an approach such as this. Now, make no mistake, the Vekor Heck is a true endgame weapon. And it can take you through everything that Warframe has to offer. Minus Eidolon Hunts. Yes, for Eidolon Hunts, we should still be using sniper rifles. Honestly, between you and me, guys, I was expecting the spiders to be the new awesome bosses and all that. Not such a major league disappointment that was. But anyway, I highly recommend those, this weapon. You do have a couple of build options. But from my point of view, going for a critical chance... And Hunter Munitions is, wow, look at that, is still the way to go. Which sucks for me because I prefer status builds in general, but when it's better, it's simply better. And that's gonna do it for now. I'm gonna thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you want to request a specific weapon review. Now I can't, in all honesty, promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week. Because as you can see, these things take quite a bit of time. But I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.